what's going on you guys welcome back to another video if y'all wondering about the background i am this is my shower this is my shower okay so i'm sitting in my bathroom because it's quiet it's like a good room it's like a good space to record in so uh, and i'm not on the toilet <laughs> i'm not on the toilet i'm just sitting on you know y'all know um but what i want to talk about is how your spiritual discernment will show you who the snakes are it will always show you who the snakes are and you know when you have this vision to see more than what, what you know what people what other people can see you know it's hard to to point it out it's hard to explain it so you have to let people find it out for themselves okay so aside from that I want to talk about some stuff that's been going on at work. I told y'all I'm going to start the work chronicles. This video might be longer because I got a lot of space in my phone now. But the next work chronicles, it's going to be a little shorter. So at work, is you know, the narcissist doing what the narcissist do in the workplace. But there's other people in the workplace. And I told y'all how I decided to do something different when we went back to work this year. And just kind of like um, join the crowd that the narcissist have so much control over. And so I start to notice how it's like when you, when you, you know, when you just become, not so much become who they are, but when you socialize with certain people and they're not used to that, it's like they just bombard you with questions and they're fascinated about things, you know, that your appearance. They're so mesmerized about, you know, just little things about you. I love your hair, you know, and they have to touch your hair and your skin looks so smooth. What do you use on? And just things that it's like, you already noticed this about me, you know, before I came over here to join y'all. But now since I'm up close because of that boundary, now since I'm up close, I'm allowing them, you know, to see me, you know, in a way that they've never seen me before. So now they're able to pinpoint out and they can see closer. And it's just like, they just be so happy to have you around. And it's like the narcissist has been keeping them away. You know, it's like a person who never allows their, their dogs to go outside and run around and let off energy. It's like a person who never takes their, their dog out for a walk. So when you let that dog out of the cage, you know, when you finally let that dog out, into the opening, they go wild. They be excited. Every little thing they're, they're, you know, every little thing just excites them. Or, you know, they just admire things that is like, oh, you really like it that much? But you have to think about it. They never had the chance to really be free the way that they should. You know, they're so impressed by just looking at a flower, like this is a real flower. So they're able to touch it and sniff it, you know? So that's how I look at the, the, the narcissists, you know, the minions and just the people that follow up behind them. And who constantly take orders from them when you when they finally get a chance to see a different side of what the narc has presented to them it's just like they they show this you know they just show how happy they are just to be free you know to finally be able to just do as they want and not as they're told or as they expected to so that's something that i noticed at work i was like they really just i don't know they do the most it's like you i don't know like you're just so excited just because i'm over here sitting at the table with y'all <clears throat> But when I was like five tables away, you know, it was like they weren't allowed to express themselves to me in any way because the narc, she had to, you know, had to keep them in line. She had to keep them in control. And because I do that, she felt like, okay, so I don't know what else to do with this. So I'm just going to Hoover. And so here comes the Hoover. And it's been going on ever since last Tuesday, every day, all day Hoover and just saying my name, like, I mean, just let my name roll off a tongue, like so happy to be engaging and i'm not even conversating with you if it's not about work we're not going to have a conversation and trust me the note the narcissist notice this they know this they know that i'm not about to entertain them in that way that it used to be they know that they will never have that back again they know that those boundaries are still set up but the people don't notice it the people are taking it in a way to where yes things are getting back to the way it was and so they're all excited so if the narcissist is excited she give them permission to be free and, and express how they feel about this that's not going to happen you know they want you to think that like, there's always going to be that one who's like, you know, that one who was getting so much of the hoovering and the love bombing and they were isolated. And that's this person who I was once close to. Like, we had such a good relationship. I've known her way before I knew the North. You know, we go way back to like 2003 or four, And so it's just like that person, I had to set these boundaries. I had to limit conversations with them because I know they were taking everything back to the North. I noticed that the North, you know, how they had took them under their wings and it just had so much control over them. And anything that the narc will feed them, they believed it. So I'm like, yeah, you're showing me a very weak side of you. And I can't deal with somebody like you the way I used to. I've cut the narc off and so I had to cut them off. And that was that was difficult. That was a really hard thing to do. But, you know, you got to do what's necessary to maintain your peace. You know, you just can't look at it in a way, whereas I'm not going to do this because I'm going to hurt them. Remember, you're doing this for your own peace of mind. You know, you're doing this for your own growth. You know, so 
this is a part of a journey that you're taking after going no contact with the narcissist. You have to cut off all other contact with the narcissist. Because if you don't, they're going to report everything back to the narc. And that narc is still going to be feeding off your energy. They're going to be feeding off your everything that you have going on with you. They don't need to know what's going on with your personal life with anything. You know, they don't need to know what type of hair you're using. They don't need to know that. Because as long as the person is finding out all these things about you and they're communicating with the narc, the narc is questioning them and they're telling them everything they want to know. Don't give them nothing about you. Starve them. Starve them and starve their supply, which used to be your friend. And I can honestly say she was a friend. So that's the only one that really hurted me to know that she was taking her word and her side against mine. You know, but at the same time, I, I have to give it time. I have to give it time. There's no limit on when she'll wake up and come around and realize the truth about the narc, you know, but my word alone is just not going to be enough evidence. It's not going to be enough to show her that you're being deceived. You've been lied to, you know, they, they've come in between a good friendship and they're trying to keep us apart because it's a control thing. It's a power thing. It's an evil thing. I'm sorry. I'm on the stomach growling. It's a narcissist. So the thing about it is, you know, when a, your spirit is going to always show you who a person really is all the time. And I just noticed that because people are starting to, you know, just be free and express their true selves. And I'm starting to see that the ones who are like, come on, let's go take a walk to the lounge. Let's go see what's in the snack machine. You still eat healthy snacks and just trying to conversate with me and just catch up and find out where I'm at because, you know, the narc been keeping them away from all that. With, I've been keeping myself away from them. It's like the narc is like, um, they notice that their contact, that no contact is still up. So they take that, that friend that I had and they still keep them close to them. They're not allowing that friend to get too close to me. And a part of, you know, that friend, a part of them, it's like they're thinking, well, I can't. I'm just not going to put myself out there to try to get closer again because they really hurt it when she stopped communicating with me. And I understand that I really do. But that narc is still keeping that, that friend close to them anyway. So it's like they really don't have a choice. The narc is still in their ear convincing them to be careful, tread lightly, don't you know, embrace her the way the others have, you know, let them be fools if they want because she's still not talking to me and that's not right. The narc feels so entitled to you. You know, they feel so entitled to you and they notice so much about you, but they don't want you to know that they're watching everything about you. That's the narc and the friend. The other ones, they've been doing it, but it's like now they don't have to keep such a close eye on me because I've been socializing with them more than I usually do, more than I have in over a year or so. But that friend and the narc, it's like when I'm amongst them, amongst the other people, I'm not sitting anywhere close to the narc and the friend. But when I, when, you know, when I get up and move away or go walk away somewhere else at work, you can feel when eyes are on you. They want you to think that they're not watching you, but they're watching you. Because you could take a, click, a quick glimpse across your shoulder and you can see that they're looking. But when you walk away, it's like they got to make sure they're not looking in your direction. They're looking away. They're pretending like they're on their phone, you know, reading a magazine or something or just socializing amongst each other. And it's like she makes sure she sits right close to, you know, my old friend. She's going to keep her close to her. You will not get away like the others have, you know. And it's like she kind of punishing them by keeping my old friend close to her and while still trying to hoover me, but keeping that, old, that other friend close to her because she know that we'll never be close like that again. And she don't want to risk the chance of letting that, my old friend get too loose because if she get away from her, we might get close again. See, the Narc, they can't stand your peace. They can't stand your light. They can't stand that they can't have a part of it. And if they can't have a part of that, they got to keep some type of supply, supply, I cannot talk, close to them to make them feel, you know, you know, just to make them feel that there is a reason to be doing all this. You know, they cannot stand your energy. They need your energy at all times. They need you to show them attention at all times. And the people, you know, who she kept isolated from me, who she, you know, her minions. It's like she notices the way that we communicate. She noticed how we socialize and interact and working and doing those small little things together. We really don't officially start working. The students don't return until tomorrow. So we've just been doing other things and catching up. The narc, I'm not allowing her to catch up what's going on with my life. And the others are not going to report nothing to her because she looks at them as beneath them because they're talking to me. At the same time, she still needs a part of me. You know, she still needs a part of me. And so, yeah, they're paying attention to everything going on with you. They're still snakes, the narcissist, and the person who they, they close supply that they're keeping around them. That person has become a snake because, you know, it's like, it's like they're doing it out of hurt. They're doing it out of revenge. You know, it's a spiteful side of them that feels like they have to treat you the way you treated them, not knowing the reason why you did this and how difficult it was to even make that decision in the first place. We haven't had that chance to talk and catch up because, you know, I, I'm getting to that. I've, I've decided that I'm going to reach out to her and talk to her and I'm just going to try one more time and let her know that, you know, the reason why I had to cut her off, 
you know, and then after that, it is what it is. Because at the, at the end of the day, I'm going to protect my peace. I don't care who comes and goes. I'm going to protect my peace. And I'm not allowing just anyone in my circle around me to absorb my energy to take that back to the narcissist. Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue to starve the narcissist of my attention. I'm going to give them just as much attention as I feel like they need. And that's just dealing with them in the workplace. It's based off work. Nothing else. They will be another friendship. I don't care how many brownies you bring every day. I don't care how many times a week you, you treat everyone to lunch, including me. That's still a Hoover, still a love them. You still won't have me. You will not have me. And then we are doing these, we've been doing like little training tests every day and stuff like that. And it's like the simplest things. That's my alarm going off. I've been up. The simplest things that, you know, we can navigate through on our phones. She bringing it to me like a little kid. Can you help me? What's this mean? What does that mean? All you have to do is hit the continue so you can go to the next part of the test. You knew that already. You just needed a part of my energy. You just had to come around me. You just wanted just, just to touch her phone is a source of supply for the narcissist. Just to stand near her and talk about something that aids her in a way, you know, something that helps her. And while I'm doing that, that old friend, she's looking over like, that's the look that she gives. She's giving that look because not only narcissist is poisoning her mind against me, like you should never ever consider being friends with her again, even if she tried to communicate, because she don't deserve you. Look how she did you. Look how she just cut you off. I cut you off because of the narc. Not because of you, because you allow the narc to, to mind control you and you let her absorb too much. And no, I'm not going to take a chance of letting it happen. No, I don't care who you are. You could be my own child. My own children will not know certain things about me. You know, if I know that they were going to take it back to someone like a narc, which is their father. But we have that understanding. They already know things not to share with him. But, you know, you just have to make sure that you cover those ground rules with people. And I'm not going to, you know, chastise. I'm not going to, you know, like constantly tell this person, don't share this with her. Because it's just like I already know that they don't understand how this narcissist operate. And they're very calculated. And they have a sneaky way of getting something out of you. And before you know it, you let it slip and they find out things about me. And I just can't take that chance. You know, so that's just a chance that I'm not willing to take with the old friend. So she's giving me this old dirty look. Like, hmm, I'm going to see how she's going to act with her. Now, she hadn't been talking to the girl. She just cut the girl off. Then she cut me off. In order. Like, I just noticed. Like, the spirit just tells you everything based off, you know, the person's body language and the expressions they give you. They give you a dirty look frowning up. They're mad. They're so mad because they can't control this narrative. You cannot have things the way you want with me anymore. So now you're just so mad about it. And yesterday when I came into work, um, I came in and stuff and put all my stuff in the locker. I came back to the office. I was like, what you got for me? And my manager was like, I'm going to have you to help the old friend out to get all of the supplies together for her school because we satellite to different schools and she's only over there for two hours a day but since school is not open all the way yet it doesn't open for them till tomorrow and us she's there now all day so the narc has that opportunity to suck her energy up all day and i can tell that it's drained she's drained she's drained i can see it that she is just so drained and it's sad but it's true it's like she um she said you know go and help her out so i'm like you know i'm doing what i'm told to do what i'm assigned to do and that's it I'm approaching you because of work. I'm not approaching you because I'm trying to hold a conversation. Sweetie, do not get it twisted. And they be so happy when you approach them, you know, whether it's the smear campaign, you know, or the people that's just easily manipulated or just anybody who's who's so close connected with the narc and under their control. You know, they it's like they want you to think they don't care that you're talking to them. But trust me, they can't they can't even really contain their excitement the way they really want to. So they express it in anger and like, I don't care. They care. So what she did when I approached her, I said, well, I was told to help you get your supplies together for work, for, um, you know, their school. And I said, and she wanted to know where, where's the, um your books and stuff so she could go through everything. She just ignored me and kept looking at her phone. So I'm just standing up there and I'm about, in a few seconds, I'm about to walk away because I'm not about to give you my energy. Like, for what? Not worth it. I'm telling you what I was assigned to do with you. Now, if you want to ignore it, you can. But I did my part by coming here and addressing it with you. I'm not going to stoop down to your petty levels, you know, because I won't let you just... You know, I won't let you have that part of me again. I can't not give that to you right now. So she looked up. I don't know where the books are. She rolled eyes and looked back down. Went, yeah. And I just walked away. Then I go and do something else. She come over there. So what you say? She said, so it's just like the attitude just changed. The whole body language changed. It's like they just need that part of you. They need to absorb a little bit of your energy to pep up. So she came back. What you said that she need? So I started to do something else. Like, baby, I'm not about to kiss up to you. This is work. I didn't approach you for conversations outside of work. I told you we supposed to be getting on and I'm not going to wait around for you. So I started to do some other stuff. What did she say we have to do again? And I said, she needs to know where your books are so we can get the supplies together. She want me to help you all back to school. I, I repeated myself to her and I continued doing what I was doing. And then she went in the office and whatever, whatever, whatever. The whole while she's in the office, she's just staring at me while I'm doing other things. And I can feel her just staring at me like. And so she came out 
And she was like, you almost finished? Because um, we're getting ready to head over there in a minute. And so the boss said, you know, she's not going to go with you. Such and such will be here in a little bit, and they can go with you. So that just killed her moment because, you know, it was like she was ready to kind of control me. She kind of felt like, since I'm the boss over at that school, you know, I get to control you, and now you have to communicate with me, and you can't, you know, it's just like you can't limit the conversation. But you don't have no power over me because either way it goes, if I would have went over there, it's still work-related. I still don't have to share anything about myself to you. I don't have to give you updated information on me. So it's like they always get it twisted. Now the snake, you know, it's like they start to turn into a snake for the narcissist. And it's like God allowed me to see them. I seen straight through it. I already know what you're about. I know your plans. The narc makes it too easy. They use other people to um, target, you know, target innocent people, people who they can't make their victim. That's what they do, you know. And so sometimes I put my headphones on if I'm finished doing whatever I'm doing, and I'm just in my own world. And it's like, again, it bothers them when they can't absorb your energy. So they have to approach you with the pettiest request and just things that it's like very self-explanatory because they need some type of attention from you, you know, just anything. Just to take your mind off focusing on yourself. They need your energy. They need your light. They feel entitled to that. How dare you be antisocial and stay away from our negativity, you know? So um, as the day went by, another person come in and this person I've been conversating with, but I noticed they stopped telling me things about the narc and they come in and the narc's birthday is Thursday of this week. I think they were saying she got gifts for the narc and gifts for me. And I'm like, why are you bringing me? I know. I know. I just, you know, I just feel like I'm supposed to bring you something because I didn't back in July for your birthday. You didn't have, I was like, okay, just sit it right there. You know, I'm not going to value this because I know where it's coming from. It's coming from a place of guilt because you were supposed to be my friend who I can trust and can confide in with different things. And now I see you connecting. Like, how does this even happen? So it's some outside people, you know, who she conjugated with. And, you know, that's how all of this mess clicked up. So I'm like, I see you too. That's why I say your, your spiritual discernment will always show you snakes. They will all, it will always show you who the snakes are. Everybody is not a genuine friend or associate. You have to limit the information you share with them because you don't know what they're going to do with that. That's why I'm so glad I followed my first mind. My gut instinct told me to back away from this person and stop sharing certain things. Because this narc, if they don't get me from the old friend, excuse me, they're going to try to get me sneaking in from the back, from the one on the back end, you know, who I socialize with from time to time, you know, on a regular basis. So it's just like, Oh, yeah, I see you. You think I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I'm just going to pretend like I don't know what's going on. I need you to think that I'm the dummy. I see what you're doing. You know, you're, you're pretending like you're all about peace and harmony and all this type of stuff. And you're not because you're just a messy person. I put you where you belong. I put you in your place. I chastise you. I tell you when you're wrong. That's the type of person I am. It's the type of friend I am. But it's like you can't just be like that. You can't be at peace with that. You can't be, you know, you're not content with being that way. You just have to have some type of messiness in your life. So you just had to come over here and. You know, get yourself involved with someone who you know I don't deal with. You see? And this is right up the Narc's alley. So I'm like, I see you know, I'm, I'm going to let that slide and play like I don't know what's going on. But I'm about to cut you off. You think the other old friend is having a hard time accepting this and giving me these ugly looks and everything. And I guess she figures she's giving me the silent treatment when I, when I approach her about stuff. You're not hurting me. You know, I've already given you the silent treatment. I've already set those boundaries with you. I already won. You're not doing anything to put me in my place. I already put you in the place you're in. That's why you're miserable. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one on the back end because I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to come at me from behind, just like a snake. That's why I say your discernment will always show you who the snakes are. I figured it out. It was in plain sight. The guilt in her eyes was like, I got I got gifts. I got something for you. Why do you have something for me a whole month later after my birthday, which I already am not big on things like that. I don't ask y'all for gifts. I don't. And I pray and I ask the Lord to, to bless me to be the giver. I don't never ask people for stuff. I don't expect things out of you. You don't have to always treat me. And it'd be the most random things. And what I'm going to call it is a basement gifts. Because these things you can tell. A Christmas bag that's been unfolded. You know, a lot of people, get your bags. I do that. You know, it saves money. If your bags look good, you can save it. Just keep it and use it the next year for Christmas or whatever, birthdays. But it's the presentation that's so sloppy that lets me know you really didn't do this from the heart. You did this out of guilt. You felt like you had to come and throw something in my face to throw me off on the fact that you are socializing with the narc and you probably have been for the last couple of months. That's why the conversation changed and I no longer vent to you. But see, God put that on my spirit a while back. Stop telling her stuff. And I was just wondering, wondering, wondering why she's not giving me the feedback like she normally do. You know, I'm going to keep it real with you. But you be keeping it messy. It got to be on a messy level. So it fits well. For her to socialize with the narc, they fit well together. It's all toxic. 
Yeah, and I felt that energy when she walked in the door yesterday straight behind me. I got a gift for you. I'm like, why? And I got this here for the mark. You right on you early for her birthday. Not that I, again, I didn't want nothing for my birthday. But you weren't even her friend. I'm not understanding. Oh, I get it. So y'all been socializing. You know, y'all got to form these little lines. <laughs> it takes all y'all to come up with things. Little old me, y'all are some giants. Y'all bigger, physically bigger, stronger, taller than me. And y'all like feel some threat in my little old me. Like, ooh. And if I can't, if I don't allow you to have me, I got to get out of here, y'all. Dang. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cut this video. I'm gonna edit it and, and cut it down some, so I'm gonna speed it up. Um, if I don't allow y'all to, to, you know, just have this part of me, you gotta come together and form these fake friendships just to set this old false narrative. Like we can be friends together. We don't have to have her. So that's the conversation that's taking place because that's what I'm seeing too. I'm telling y'all, see straight through them. And God will always show you the snakes. And then once He show you who a person really is, you better believe it and don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Treat them accordingly to what they give you. Limit everything. Limit conversations, set certain boundaries. You know, do what you need to do to maintain peace in this situation. Because you have to deal with it on a day to day, especially if you're dealing with it at work or in your home. You know, in certain ways that you just have to, um, you know, change the way you socialize with a person. Because if you don't, you know, they're really sucking up things out of you. And you're wondering, where is all this going? And you're not giving me nothing in return anymore like you used to. They're giving it to the narcissist. Trust and believe. So I'm going to end this video so I won't be late for work. I'm going to get on out of here. Y'all have a good day and I will talk to you soon.